This is part 66 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss writing rerunnable SQL scripts. Please watch part 65 before proceeding. So, what is a rerunnable SQL script? A rerunnable SQL script is a script that when run more than once will not throw errors. Let's understand what we mean by this statement with an example. Let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio. Notice that here we have this create table script. This is going to create this table TBL employee. I want this table to be created in this sample database. So that's why we are using use sample. So this table is going to be created within the sample database. So when I run this query, at the moment notice that I don't have this table TBL employee. So when I run this the first time, this is going to execute successfully and the table gets created. So when we refresh this, notice that we have that table within that sample database. Then if I try to run this query once again, look at what's going to happen. We get an error. Why? Because we have the table already. That's why it says there is already an object named TBL employee. Okay. So this script right here is not rerunnable. So how do we make the script rerunnable? Pretty straightforward. Check for the existence of the table. If the table doesn't exist, only then try to create the table. Else print a message stating the table already exists. So obviously the next question is how do we check for the existence of a table? In a previous session we discussed using information underscore schema dot tables view to list all the tables in a SQL Server database. So we're going to make that make use of that view to check for the existence of the table. So look at this query select star from information underscore schema dot tables where table name is equal to the the name of the table that we are trying to create. So if that table exists, this query is going to return a row. And then we are passing the result of this query to this function exists. So if at all, if there is anything returned by this query, then this exists function is going to return true. Otherwise, it's going to return false. So basically, look at this expression right here, if not exists. So if the table does not exist, then go ahead and create the table print a message stating the table is successfully created else print a message stating the table already exists pretty straightforward let's look at this query in action and to just speed things up i have this query already typed so let me copy and paste that in sql server management studio so since we already have the table tbl employee when we execute this query uh, look at this first of all this query when we execute this query we get a row back and we are passing that to this exist function. So obviously, you know, this is going to check this expression right here is going to check if the table is there or not. And if the table is not there, then create the table else print this message straightforward. So let's execute this. Look at that table TBL employee already exists. On the other hand, if I delete this table and execute this query, Notice that table TBL employee successfully created. Refresh this TBL employee there. I execute this query once again. Table TBL employee already exists. No matter how many times we execute this, we don't get an error. So this script is rerunnable. Now, to check for the existence of the table, we have used information underscore schema dot tables. There is another way to check for the existence of the table. You can simply use this function, this SQL Server built-in function, object ID, and pass the name of the object. Here, the name of the object is our table name. So if this object already exists in SQL Server database, then it will have an ID. And this function is simply going to return that ID. So if there is an ID for that object, then we know the table is already there. If it is null, then we know you know, we don't have a table there, so we'll go ahead and create that. So just to show you that, we already have the table right here, this table TBL employee. So when we say select object ID and then pass the name of the object, which is TBL employee. And then look at this. When I execute this query, I get the ID of that object. Okay. So if that is null, if object ID for a given object is null, then we know for sure that object doesn't exist. We can go ahead and create that object, in this case, table, and then print a message saying uh, table created successfully. Uh, else, we'll print a message saying the table already exists. And just to show you that in action, let me copy this query 
and paste that within SQL Server Management Studio. The table is already there, so when we execute this table, TBL employee already exists. All right. Now, depending on what we want to achieve, sometimes you know um, we may want to drop and recreate the table. So if the table already exists, we want to drop and recreate it. Okay. This is especially true if we are building some test databases. Okay. So how do we drop and recreate the tables? You know, again check for the existence of the table, and then only drop the table. Um, because if you don't check for the existence of the table and then try to drop a table and if the table doesn't exist you will get again an error so that's why when dropping a table check if the table already exists and again to check for the existence of the table you can either use information underscore schema dot tables view or this object ID function okay notice that if object ID then drop the table so if there is if that is not null then we know that object is there in which case go ahead and drop it and then recreate the table okay let's look at that query in action so let's copy this to SQL Server Management Studio so the table is already there so when I execute this it's going to drop the table and then recreate that okay so no matter how many times we execute this it's going to drop the table recreate it drop the table recreate it okay now you might be wondering let me actually delete this if you don't have this condition right here the check to make sure that the object is there before we try to delete if we don't have that condition and notice that we don't have the table TBL employee now if I try to execute this we will get an error why because the table doesn't exist anymore so the query errors out right there and then this doesn't get executed that's why make sure you check for the existence of the table before you you know try to drop it let's look at another example now this script right here is not rerunnable look at what the script is trying to do it's trying to add a column email address to this table TBL employee when we run the script the first time it's going to run without any problem if that column doesn't exist if I run it again then it's going to throw an error because a table cannot have um, two columns with the same name so this script again is not rerunnable so how do we make the script rerunnable obviously check for the existence of that column so how do you check for the existence of the column again you can use this information underscore schema dot columns we discussed about this in previous session as well and notice that we are checking the name of the column not only that actually let's look at that query in action so when I execute this select star from information underscore schema dot columns where column name is equal to email address so when we execute this we we, we, didn't, we didn't get anything why because we don't have that column there so let me actually execute this query so it's going to add that column to our table TBL employee so if we expand that we should have email address column right there so now when we execute this we should get it all look at that the column name is email address and we are also having here table name filter and that's very important because if there is another table with the same column name you know you will get that true as well that's why we need to filter you know on table name so if that column email address that doesn't exist on this table TBL employee only then try to add that column okay and notice that here I have another condition table schema again this is very important especially if your SQL server has multiple schemas okay in multiple schemas you can have same table name and same column name so obviously you don't want to be altering a table that is present in a different schema okay so that's why it's very important to check the schema as well just in case if your SQL server has got multiple schemas if that's not the case it's enough if you check just the table name and the column name again this script is rerunnable no matter how many times you run you know this is not going to throw an error if the column exists it's going to print that message if it doesn't exist it's going to add that column again 
to check for the column existence you can either use this view or you can use this column length function okay again just like you know object ID function so column length you pass the name of the table and the column that you're looking for if that column length function is not null then we know that the column already exists on that table else the column doesn't exist in which case you can have that you know the script to add the column to the table all right on this slide you can find resources for asp.net c sharp and sql server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day